Even though the act of smoking meat is often accompanied by grilling, there is a significant difference between the two methods. Preparation, equipment, effort, time, and flavor. There are plenty of other factors to consider when deciding which method to use, and the outcome is definitely not the same. Smoking is a form of preserving and cooking food, using smoke combined with low, indirect heat that's contained in an enclosed space. While this was once a practical method, meat had to be preserved before refrigerators existed. Nowadays, people usually turn to smoking for the flavor and tenderness imparted during the process. Variety comes into play with the choice of what wood is burned as the heat source. The smoke creates different flavors depending on the type of wood used. For example, mesquite, hickory, or apple. Electric, gas, and charcoal smokers are also common, and all ensure that a consistent temperature is maintained throughout the process for even cooking. Hot smoking occurs at a constant heat over a long time, and it can absolutely be an all-day process. This effectively supercooks the meat, so it can also benefit from a dry rub for added flavor. Besides just adding flavor from the smoke and wood, the lengthy process of smoking causes collagen and fat to break down and melt, resulting in juicy, tender meat. On the other side of the spectrum, grilling involves using high heat for a shorter duration, and the meat is placed on a grate over the heat source, usually charcoal, wood, or gas. The process of direct grilling, which is when the flame is immediately beneath the grate, cooks your meat in no time, with temperatures between 400 and 550 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also indirect grilling, which uses heat between 190 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and requires a longer period to cook larger pieces of meat. When grilling, the aim is to get a lot of heat to each side of the protein in order to sear it and create a crust, which is important for retaining moisture. Grills come in all sorts of styles, all of which require different levels of hands-on involvement. Gas grills use propane to heat up quickly and are ready in no time. You can easily set the temperature and alter it depending on your needs using a simple dial. Meanwhile, charcoal burning grills require you to light coals and wait for them to slowly heat up. Since you're working with fire, it can be more difficult to monitor the actual heat which requires more attention to avoid burning your food. Then again, nothing compares to the taste of smoky charred meat straight from a coal-burning grill. Both smoking and grilling add plenty of flavor to meat and veggies without creating extra fat. Unfortunately, the two techniques have sometimes been linked to possible carcinogens released during cooking. Although Time Magazine points out that many of the results are hard to separate from other factors, though, such as whether people who eat lots of grilled and smoked meats also consume more processed foods. Nevertheless, Moffitt Cancer Center spoke with epidemiologist Dr. Stephanie Schmidt, who explained that darkened, charred meat and smoky flavors contain carcinogenic compounds. Research suggests that the combination of high heat, meat, and animal fat act together to create these compounds. But it's possible that when meat is smoked more slowly at lower temperatures, the formation of these potential toxins is less likely. Besides the temperature and intensity of the heat, the source is also significant. A study in the Journal of Food Chemistry found that certain types of wood, like poplar and hickory, produce less detrimental compounds compared with others, including beech. To reduce possible negative effects, Dr. Schmidt recommends keeping your grill clean, cooking meat quickly, avoiding the charred bits, and limiting overall consumption. When it comes to the simpler cooking method, smoking requires more skill to perfect, so beginners might want to start with grilling. Since smoking meat takes a long time, it also requires far more vigilance. Unless you're using an electric smoker with regulated temperature controls, you have to ensure the wood or charcoal are burning consistently. If the temperature rises too high, it could cook the exterior of the meat, making it impossible for the smoke to continue cooking the interior. Considering the process occurs in a closed chamber, it is also more difficult to keep an eye on the meat without disturbing the temperature every time you open the lid. If you've already mastered the technique, though, and have plenty of time to monitor the process, then smoking is the best way to build complex flavors and a tender melt-in-your-mouth texture. 
But for a quick approach that will have you eating in no time, the definite choice is grilling. Since the meat is cooked at such high heat, grilling is done much faster to maintain a juicy, tender consistency. Even though grilling is quicker, if you were using direct heat from the flame, you also have to be attentive, or you will end up with completely blackened, inedible meat. No meat in this? You get plenty of meat at home. Be polite, have some ketchup. Food should be regularly moved around the grill as well to avoid burning it, and using a trusty meat thermometer to know when it's ready will help you make sure it's cooked safely and completely. Large pieces of meat definitely benefit from a long and slow cook time, making them ideal candidates for a smoker. If you plan to brine your meat or give it a dry rub, smoking will really help the flavors infuse during the cooking time. Also, using smoke from different types of woods imparts a unique taste, which may pair better with more flavorful meats. Chicken wings, pork shoulder, brisket, and ham are all excellent choices for smoking. On the other hand, direct grilling works better for small pieces of tender meat, like steaks. Chicken breasts, pork chops, and fish fillets are also cuts that do well with direct heat. But you can also use indirect grilling for larger hunks of meat, such as brisket, whole chickens, ribs, and pork shoulders. When deciding whether you'll be smoking or grilling, look at the size and fat content of the meat, as well as the flavor profile you're aiming for to make the right decision. If you opt for smoking, make sure you have sufficient time. It's not a process that can be rushed. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about cooking insights are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.